Hey again, Doug Sidney here at Horton in Roseville, Minnesota. The Horton DM Advantage on-off fan clutch is spring engaged and air disengaged, making it a simple component to repair and replace. It's also one of the most popular engine cooling parts on the road today. Here's how to rebuild one using a DM Advantage quick repair kit. You'll need the following tools. A two inch socket wrench, T55 Torx Plus bit, T27 Torx bit, FMFD removal tool, a pry bar, I'm using a large screwdriver, ring pliers, screwdrivers, cage nut, half inch breaker bar, half inch torque wrench, and an 11 millimeter sock and ratchet. Also, make sure you've got proper eye protection on while you're doing this rebuild, seriously. All right, first we're gonna remove and discard this top part, the fan mounting friction disc. You can see we've taken the fan drive off the engine, place it in a vise, and clamp this journal bracket tight. To start, I'm gonna apply 80 to 120 PSI of air pressure to the fan drive's air inlet. This will help in removal of the fan mounting disc. Next, we'll insert a half inch breaker bar into the appropriate square on the FMFD removal tool. Position the FMFD removal tool on the disc by inserting the studs into the appropriate holes. Like so. The radius of this tool will fit around the fan pilot no matter what size DM Advantage clutch you're replacing. Then with your T55 Torx Plus driver, like so, Rotate the jack bolt counterclockwise while holding the FMFD in position with the FMFD removal tool. Now unscrew the fan mounting disc from the jack bolt, discard the disc while a new one's provided in the repair kit. We're not gonna disassemble this spring housing. Doing this can cause personal injury. Just hand tighten the cage nut onto the jack bolt and this part of the assembly will stay together. That'll allow us to remove it. First, remove air pressure from the drive. This is important to make sure you don't sustain a serious injury. Now remove the eight button head screws and the friction liner using your T27 Torx bit. Next, discard the friction liner. We'll use the new one from the repair kit. Remove the spring housing piston assembly. When you do this, you might need to remove the sticker containing the part number and serial number of the fan drive. Just make sure you write this information down so you have it for future reference. If you have any trouble taking the spring housing and piston assembly off, you can gently pry it away from the pulley using a small flathead screwdriver or apply air pressure. Either like so, or like so. The next step is to take off the air chamber seal. First, we'll remove the air chamber cap retaining ring. Next, Gently and evenly pry the air chamber cap out of the pulley using two small screwdrivers placed 180 degrees apart like this. If you're repairing a DM Advantage clutch, discard the new air cap from the kit and don't use it in the repair. If you're upgrading from an old DriveMaster model and an air cap is provided in your kit, use the new air cap and discard the one from the clutch you're repairing. 
Now check for signs of wear on this face seal. Wear indicates that dirt may exist in the air system. So if dirt or oil exists in the system, you'll need to clean it out before the fan drive is reinstalled. Finally, you'll remove the bearing nut from the journal bracket using a two inch socket wrench. Then we just slide the pulley and bearing assembly off the journal bracket. When you do that, make sure to wipe away any excess grease from the pulley at this point. Okay, awesome. Now it's time to rebuild this bad boy. Make sure you fully support the pulley and press the bearings out of it. These bearings will be discarded and a new drack bearing is provided in the kit. It's important to replace the pulley bearing during each repair to maximize the life of your fan drive. If spacers are included, reuse the existing spacers with the correct drack bearing provided in the kit. Fully supporting the pulley, press the new bearing into place, noting the position of the lip inside the pulley. It's super important to press the outer bearing race to avoid damage to the bearing. Next, we'll replace the air cartridge. To start, we'll remove the retaining ring and the air cartridge assembly. Once that's done, the journal bracket bore here might be dirty, so be sure and clean it if you need to. Now, take your O-ring lubricant from the kit and apply it to the outside O-rings of the new air cartridge assembly in your capsule in the kit. a little bit of work, spread it around, pop it back in. There should be a new ring in your capsule as well. Reinsert that, I teeth it up first. Now that step's done. This has to be fully seated in the retaining ring groove to keep the air cartridge assembly from moving. You'll see this retaining ring is beveled. The curved side must be installed facing away from the cartridge. And I always remove any foreign debris from the journal bracket shaft. Make sure this is for the most part clean. Now we need to replace the pulley. Align this hole in the bearing guide insert onto the threaded end of the journal bracket and push the bearing guide insert out while lowering the pulley onto the journal bracket. Discard the bearing guide insert. Then install the bearing spacers. Be sure this bearing nut hex is facing up. Replace and tighten the bearing nut to 130 foot-pounds or 170 newton meters of torque.
Now we can assemble the air chamber cap and face seal, then screw the face seal into the air chamber cap and tighten it to 62 inch pounds, which is seven Newton meters, like so. Using a clean and dry cloth, clean both the float seal tip and the new face seal here. Be careful not to scratch these seal surfaces. Now apply a thin film of lubricant to the O-ring seal. like so, and carefully set the air chamber cap into the pulley and install the retaining ring. Using the grease supplied, apply a continuous bead of grease to this area, but make sure you don't get any beyond the seal contact surface. Now install the air chamber seal into the pulley like this, making sure the seal's evenly seated against the side and bottom of the groove surfaces. Next, carefully set the quick kit assembly into position. Gently rotate it to align the mounting holes in the assembly with the pulley. After you've done that, Alternately and evenly tighten the eight button head screws to 80 inch pounds, nine Newton meters of torque. Now apply air pressure and listen for any leaks. You shouldn't hear anything coming from the drive. Great. Now we're ready to reinstall this drive on the truck. Be sure to check the vehicle service manual as instructions for mounting and removing fan clutches vary by application. For more information and instructional videos, check out HortonWW.com and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.